But yeah. even if it is like, for example, council properties. Fact, even that, yeah. As you know, right to buy. Hundred percent. I, I tell the everyone, best, the best everyone, one, the best scheme out there. I tell everyone, please, yeah. please. It doesn't matter if you're on the council, but go and get yeah, your yeah, yeah, flat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, people, welcome back to the Property Strategist Podcast. You're here today with your boy Kenny, and who else have we got? Yeah, you go, you got your boy Akin in the building. And, and uh, today we've got a special guest. As we've always. Got a very, very special guest today. Always. This is someone that you need to know about, that you probably don't know about yet, but today you're going to know all about him. Yeah, he's the, he's the man behind the, he's, you know, a special platform. That's it, man he's behind a special things. platform. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. without further ado, we want to welcome Kofi from Million Pound Homes. Tell, tell them, say hi. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, what's going on, people? Yeah, 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 I'm Kofi from Million Pound Homes. Um, but... You know, we'll, we'll get into the how that even came about. And yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all that kind of nice stuff. to have you in the building, bro, yeah, man. man. Thank you. You also give us the nice present as well. I appreciate so, it. So, guys, make sure when you come next time, you yeah, give us you a nice present. You give us a, anyway, we're not we'll leave it there. We'll leave it there. We're not going to promote. No problem. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> but our brand's today. You know, I always like to come you know, with yeah. gifts. I appreciate you having me on your platform. No worries, man. No worries. But let's start from the beginning, man, because we see your platform and we think, okay, it's got a lot of followers. It's got uh, great properties on there. There's something he's doing here that's a bit different than you know other platforms that we're seeing. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously, you don't show your face on the platform as well. So, mm -hmm. but we want to know a little bit about you. Like, you know, what's your background? You know, where did you sort of grow up and things like that? Yeah. Um, and go from there. And we'll, we'll get into the property stuff. Cool. So, um, I grew up in Brixton. Yeah. Um, I was there till I was about 13. Both parents, dad, mum. Um, dad moved to Ethiopia when I was 10. Oh, I started wow. working for the UN. Oh, wow. Um, so when he moved, we moved to West Norwood. Uh, when I was 14, so obviously that we're all African or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, your parents say to you, all right, cool. Like, if you don't do this, you're going back to Ghana. <laughs> hey, you know, and hey. obviously, you, you, you don't think it's serious. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 14 came, I got sent back. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. it's actually yeah, happening. Yeah, yeah. So you're, you're, it's, it's wow. a real thing. You're one of them, man. It's a real wow. thing. It's a real thing. So, uh, wow. so I went back to Ghana, 14 to 16, I was there. So I actually okay. done my GCSEs out there. Wow. wow. Um, and I went, one, met one of my good friends and business partner. And I own a lot of properties with him now, James. Mm -hmm. um, so I came back, 16, um, doing, uh, what was it, A-levels. Yeah. Um, but I wasn't that good at school anyway, to be fair. Like, okay, it was, it was, I was wasting everyone's time, to be fair. <laughs> so I, I used to work a lot during A-levels. Mm. And um, but because I, I wasn't that good at school, I thought I need to be like, I need to be ahead of everyone. So I was mm. always very hardworking. Mm. Got you. Um, so when I, I got a job in River Island at 16 and I'd w work a lot of hours. Okay. Uh, so that was obviously a good experience trying to like figure out work ethic and communicating with people, building relationships, sales, etc. cetera. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> obviously it's it's um it's retail, but at the same time you're building a lot of skills from it. Yeah, mm. um, like customer service. And yeah, like, like customer service. It's like talking to people, mm. just yeah, seeing yeah, yeah, yeah. like somebody wants this. Okay, but you can recommend that as well. Yeah, and it's just building relationships. So, mm. so I worked in River Island, um, and then went to uni. Went to University of Hertfordshire. Okay. Um, How was that for you? That was an interesting experience. Yeah, um, a lot of partying, or is it? Or do you head down, just focusing? Um, let's not go into details. Man. No, <laughs> <laughs> like, let's not go into details. <laughs> a bit of both, a bit of both. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, yeah Hertfordshire is interesting because it's not. So obviously it's outside of London, but yeah. it's not that far from London. So okay, yeah, a lot of people from London go to Hertfordshire. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? But a lot of people bring their nonsense from London to Hertfordshire. True. Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes it didn't really feel that separate. Okay, fair enough. I, mm. I would, I would say that. Um, but I went to, so I went to Hertfordshire and I studied physiology. Yep. So I did a foundation year the first year. Yep. Um, and then went on to do physiology. Um, but by the, the second, third year, yep. once again, education is not for me. I realized that. Yeah, yeah. So I would work a lot. I'd work 12 hour days. Wow. Um, wow. just cause as I said before, I'd rather work hard than just be like terrible at yeah, education. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I was looking for other jobs and I came across a job at Barclays. Okay. So Mm. Um, and it was for a cashier role. Okay. And funny enough, it was between en Enterprise and Barclays. Mm -hmm. And the Enterprise job was, I think it was 17K, but, and it was 50 hours a week. Wow. Damn. And it was at Heathrow. And those shifts were like 5 a.m. to 1 p.m. Wait, but 17K? I'll, yeah, 17K. 50 hours a week? But it was, the, you know, the like the people that open the barriers? Yeah, 
yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I applied for that job. Mm. And the reason why I applied for it, because I was in my head, I was thinking, I'm not going to get the grades to get on the grad scheme. Uh, so if I worked for the company before that point, then if I can work my way up, I yeah, can yeah, get yeah, yeah, twang yeah, one of the door. managers yeah, and yeah, yeah. be like, yeah, I'm, I'm smart, bring yeah, me yeah, in. Because yeah. I'm not going to get the grades, so I'm not yeah, going to get yeah. one. Um, so I went for that interview and the, they knew what my plan was. Okay. So they were saying, look, if you take this job, there's no way for you to upgrade. I said, yeah, no, man, it's fine. I'll, I'll take it. Because you can always, you can always <laughs> yeah, negotiate yeah, your way yeah, into yeah, a situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but they saw right through what I was doing. So they didn't give me the job, even though the interview was amazing. They yes. didn't give me the job. But the Barclays interview was terrible. Okay. But they gave me the job. Oh, wow. So I started working in Barclays, but I told, but they were like, they can't do part-time. It has to be full-time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I was doing Tuesdays to Saturdays mm -hmm. at um, Barclays and I was going to uni on Mondays. Okay. Wow. So then I told my um, head of program, head of year, whatever it is, mm -hmm. that look, I, uni's not for me. Yeah. I found a job this might work for me long term. Mm. So if I don't turn up to lectures, is that cool? Mm. And she was she was very cool. She was oh, like, wow. look, as long as you go on this day or for these kind of lectures, then you're fine. Mm. So I was going, yeah, uni on Mondays, I was doing work on uni work on Sundays and then Tuesday to Saturday I was working in Barclays amazing. as a cashier. Wow, that's amazing. amazing. So you're already wow. stuck in then in uni then you're already yeah, yeah, yeah. So money. I was saving money. Um saving money, but the good thing about working in retail banking is you get to speak to people that are, they've got money or they're yeah, not in the best yeah, yeah, yeah. financial position and you can understand how people got to that. Mm. And then you start to see a trend of like even behavioral patterns. Mm. So sometimes you can even see, you can even see somebody walking through the door. You even, you know, if mm. they might be an overdraft or you know, if they've got a good tell amount of savings, mm. you know, give me something like it's, uh, or or rather, give me yeah. one of the habits that you notice that, yeah, that about, people are yeah. doing. Just uh, one or so, black people. Just people. No, I can say black people. Oh, no, oh, no, I say black people. Oh, I can say black people. Wow, people. Yeah. Don't, listen, don't come for me. Um, <laughs> yeah. What are some of the habits? Positive or negative. Yeah, 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 yeah. Positive and negative habits that you saw. Um. So I learned this through, um, obviously working, but then obviously yeah. like looking into things yourself mm -hmm. is that. Mm -hmm. Saving for some people or a lot of people is, is, is really not going to take you anywhere. You need mm. to earn more money. Mm. For example, you need, whether it's, um, if it's one thing that you're focusing on, focus on getting a pay rise, whether it's 10K, that's, you know, 500 pound a month extra, or whatever mm. it is. It's going to be much easier for you to look at, whether it's freelancing opportunities or getting a better salary or promotion, etc., than trying to save 500 pounds or mm. 700 pounds especially in a climate like this mm -hmm. so i realized that a lot of the people that we we were seeing they were high earners and things like that they were they had multiple sources of income so it's easier for them to do th more things mm. okay um so i want to say it's a habit but i would say it's more of a, a focus or something to prioritize if you're looking at how do you put yourself in a better financial position like, you, once again you're not going to save yourself yeah. into riches mm -hmm. yeah. so just oh, yeah. to carry on then you were working in the bank and you noticed some things you were able to chat to people and notice oh, yeah. yeah so where did you go from there like how yeah how do we get there so really and truly the i'm uh, sorry how does this transition into property as well so yeah, yeah. when i was speaking to people and understanding how people were making money yeah. and all that kind of stuff you see a lot of developers yeah. you see a lot of investors yeah. um people that had multiple um, mortgages coming out of their personal account etc so you'd be wondering mm. like what's that about or why do you have so many mortgages or why do you have so many different yeah, things and then they'll talk to you about that and um, you would see that consistently and I've even seen through Million Pound Homes a lot of people that live in certain types of homes or are doing certain things they're, they've been in property or they're a property mm. developer or something like that so it's you start it's the most common it was it was very common wow. for, for okay. people that were doing well i would say wow. they were they were developers wow. yeah. so that made me think okay so clearly there's something here mm. yeah. um and that's when i started looking into property yeah. fortunately because i went to banking i could get a good understanding of mortgages etc yeah. so at that time that's when i explored getting my first property okay. um and my first property was my friend james it was a mixed-use property in blackburn okay. two bedroom yeah. flat upstairs and a barber shop downstairs mm -hmm. that's that's a different that's kind of a different one for a first property well yeah, yeah. You go that route? yeah. so the reason why we've done that is because we were looking for cash flow mm -hmm. ah, okay so i'm i'm sure most people have said this but rich that poor dad opens your eyes yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it opens your eyes to many different 100%. things mm -hmm. and that was i read that in like my first year working in, in barclays I, read, I listened to it mm -hmm. audiobook 
And um, I was just thinking, we need cash flow. We need cash flow. So there's no point of buying a buy to let. That's if we're going to be very low yield. You're not going to you're make a few hundred pounds a month or yeah, whatever. Exactly. Where mixed use properties we found had a better yield, etc. So even if, for example, the flat, the flat is empty, at least you've got the barbershop who's in a long lease. Yeah. Oh, so you wanted to still maintain the mixed use of it, yeah. basically. Yeah, okay. yeah, we weren't converting it. We weren't, We just wanted the income. Okay. Got so right. we saved up a certain amount of money and we bought the mixed use yep. property mm. and it was about 13% yield. Okay. Mm. Um and and you kept it as barbershop for on the bottom floor. Oh, nice. We kept nice. it up right up until we sold it recently. Mm. Um and the barber was consistent on the, the barber business was consistent in paying and no, no issues. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 but yeah, that was our that was our first property. Okay, cool. And um after that we bought uh, some new builds but we bought at discount. Okay. Um, so I bought another one in like Sunbury. Okay. And um, Sunbury, where is that? It's like Sunbury on Thames, it's near Staines. Staines, okay. Yeah. yeah. And uh, when you say discount, how were you able to get that discount? So because it was, developer was struggling to sell. So mm. really and truly, they were happy to let it go at 20% discount. Mm. So we were able to, so I borrowed, no, me and my friend borrowed money from friends, et cetera. And we're like, yep. look, this is a great opportunity. Let's buy it. Yep. Mm -hmm. That one, there wasn't really a proper strategy. It was just, let's, let's just get it. Let's just get it. Just vibes. Just do it. <laughs> let's just, let's just get yeah. it. And then um, the next one after that was, we got um, six flats in Norwich. Mm, wow. um, six new build flats. They sold that to us at twenty five percent discount. Wow. Mm. And, and they bought, bought them as a block. Or? Yeah, so it was, a, it was an office converted into residential. Yeah, okay, and cool. they it was forty five units. So they had sold thirty nine. They only needed to sell the remaining six. Okay, mm. cool. So and we came along basically saying that look, we've got this unorthodox structure, which yeah. means that we can buy your flats very quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And that's that's basically. There's a cash buy. I'm assuming an auction or. So they were, there was um. I won't, yeah, I won't even say that. There was an agent, yeah. but they were selling below market value okay. deals. Mm. So they approached us basically saying that, look, there's an opportunity here. You can buy it at this discount. Now, the problem is with a lot of below market value deals is that, well, at the time, from what I remember, they, we couldn't, we would have to put a deposit down. Mm. Even if it was a below market value deal, we wouldn't be able to mm. use the discount. Now, some lenders can do it, some can't. From my understanding, mm. if you use bridging finance, they may be able to, etc. Mm. But we needed on, needed it on a buy to let mortgage, so they weren't going to use the discount. Okay. Um, so what we did was we set up a corporate structure where basically we had two companies, and one company was going to be buying the flats at full market value, mm. and then the developer was going to invest the twenty five percent deposit into a separate company mm. that we set up. So essentially. And that company would loan the money to the company that was buying the flats. Wow. So essentially oh. it'll be it will be a full price purchase, yeah. but really and truly we're only buying it for seventy five percent. How did you how did you start? is this a broker? Or this was No, so this is me and my friend. But my friend yeah, worked in he worked in a uh, wealth management. Uh, so in wow. business is quite a common transaction. Yeah. In corporate like co corporate oh, transaction is quite yeah, common. Yeah, yeah. Whereas in property it's not. So we had to get a commercial lawyer and a residential lawyer on it because it, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was quite different. It was quite different because it was a simultaneous transaction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And is this a strategy you'd use again or is it is just for that deal? For so you? I would use it again, yeah. but it was a hassle. I'm, I, I, I can't <laughs> it, was a, it was a hassle. Mm. And doing certain transactions like that increases your legal fees, mm, yeah. um, et cetera. So it, it, was, it, was a, it was a good way to do it. And if my sole focus was on property investments and bulk purchasing and things like that, then I'll do it or I'll buy limited uh, bulk um, properties in limited companies. Okay, I would, cool. I'll do it like that. Yeah, cool. yeah. But, and um, and in terms of raising finance for these deals, like how were you able to do that? Was this from the previous properties that you had or was it like loans as well from friends? So that, that was friends, loans, et cetera. Because mm -hmm. on that deal, we didn't have to pay, put a deposit down. It was mm -hmm. only transactional fees, but the transactional fees were expensive, stamp duty, mm -hmm. legal fees. Um, surveys, etc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I that remember. was just more friends. See, if that makes sense to us, but I remember we did one TikTok where mm. we said, "Yeah, borrowed money from a friend." We got slewed in the comments. <laughs> Essentially, slewed basically, the comments. We, there's, there's, there's a project that we're doing in uh, in Canik in Birmingham, and we're yeah. raising private finance mm. to cover part of the, the deposit. Yeah. Um, and as part of TikTok, I said, "Yeah, we'll borrow X amount from friends and family to pay pay mm. off." And then, yeah, because that's what everyone, we're because that's what like. In our circle, that's what we're used to, you know. Yeah. I mean, that's quite common. But why were they slewing you? What was the like? Oh, I think so it, your it, friends are just gonna have fifty k or twenty k or this that. But I don't think we get yeah the context of like yeah, for example, just... you can have a friend that's just got an inheritance or 
let's just remortgage a house or, or you know, just stats or just save or, money. yeah or, <laughs> or just, just save man that's that's the funny thing i think like because we a lot of the time when you see these comments and some sometimes it happens on million pound homes or, or mm. whatever it is that people are like who has this money yeah who yeah. can do this <laughs> how do they do this <laughs> to myself like and and to be fair, I used to think like that mm. slightly as well. Like mm. who has mm. even me? So twenty like, people, yeah, yeah like you would think right, that. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, then you see a lot of content online where it'll be like raising private finance, yeah, 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 yeah. for yeah. example. And okay, we find an investor. He has fifty k in savings, yeah. and we give him a certain percentage. Yeah. And then I get it. Some people will be like, "Well, who has fifty k in savings?" Yeah, 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 yeah. Obviously, there's different places where you can find investors, but at the same time, even whether it's a a family friend or if it's an uncle or somebody you don't even realize yeah, yeah, has yeah, that yeah, money yeah, saved yeah, yeah. but if you put yourself out there saying look i am looking for this this is my process or mm. i'm giving fixed returns somebody is going to make themselves yeah, yeah, known yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, think, I, think, I think this That's year it. i think they were making a priority to kind of show that to the community i think there's a misconception that i don't know our community don't have money or something like that where just by going to your auntie at church yeah. and saying, auntie, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you have five home homes in yeah, yeah. that you bought 20 years ago <laughs> and I know you got some equity built there. Do you 100%. mind if I go to Liverpool and help you invest and yeah. I'll take a percentage of that? There you go. It, it's as easy as that. It doesn't have to be mad, mad complicated. But that, that's this, the thing that you just said, mm. for example. So a lot of people would ask, so like my um, home in Brixton, mm. as I said, that's the home that we grew up in, yeah. but I own that house with my parents now yeah, yeah. and I've owned it since 2015. Mm. Now, obviously, there was a inherent inheritance tax thing. That that's yeah, the reason yeah. why, mm. main reason why we've done it. So, obviously, now I wouldn't have to pay inheritance tax on that property. Yeah, 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 yeah. But really and truly, my dad was like, "Look, when we were um, remortgaging the property, because he wanted it to money to do other things, my mom wanted to do other things, etc." Mm. He was like, "Look, if you want to take a certain amount of money to go and buy more property, mm. you can. Mm, like, like, if that. you think about the amount of, like you said, aunties and uncles or parents mm. or whatever it is that have." Mm. homes mm-hmm. and they've had the homes since the 19s, 19, uh, 90s or whatever, that's... then everyone can do it to some yeah, extent. Yeah, 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 yeah. But even if it is like, for example, council properties, Fact, even that, yeah. as you know, right to buy, 100%. I'm te- I, I tell the everyone, best, the best everyone, one, the best scheme out there. I tell everyone, please, yeah, please, it doesn't matter if you're on a council, but go and get yeah, your yeah, flat. Yeah, 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 just yeah. Get I don't care if it's in Woolies, Beckham, just, just anywhere go and get your flat. London is making sense. Mm. It just makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So whatever your situation is, if, as I said, if it's, if you are in a council flat or if your your parents have did buy their home a few mm. years ago, you mm. can speak to your parents and say, look, this is what the situation is or this is what I've seen. Mm. Maybe they might not trust you yet. Maybe they need to see like your, you know, you've got a better idea that they want to maybe invest in to some extent yep. or there's a certain property deal that they want to invest in with you. Mm. Maybe you just have to wait, mm. but there's there's options. Yeah, there's yeah, a, there's you're, a you're, lot you're, of options. You're, you're touching on an important point. I think... Every, everyone that can and has raised, you know, finance for deals, I think we're, we're just considered, I don't know, special, you you know, you come from a privileged background. My parents didn't give me no money. Yeah. I think the first investment I came from was actually for a rent-to-rent deal. And this is just for my boy. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? And it doesn't have to be every deal, like, we're buying a property. Yeah. I think he put together 4K for yeah, a deal yeah. and he had 2K, had 2K. Yeah. So that was, that's still raising finance. It doesn't matter how big or small it is. And then no, the second deal came from... Um, an investor that I was managing properties for mm. and he's a director. Mm. And he was just like, yeah, you saw some properties for me yeah, and my know. friends. Why don't you just get one together? And it's, yeah. It doesn't, it happens more naturally than you think it does. It's not like 100%. you just go online and say, I want, or yeah. sometimes now, but it doesn't happen like that all the time. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, and I will say like as that. well yeah. that you put yourself out there you for put yourself it out there. Yeah, for you, it you don't just sit back and let something hopefully happen and exactly. wish for something. Like, yeah. You actually put yourself out there. You let them know this is, this is what I do. And they came to you and said, yeah. okay, Let's talk, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's yeah. a, the funny thing. So even when with that, like when we bought the Norwich flats, so we were, obviously it was a big transaction. Mm. So we were speaking to different people to see like how we can raise the money mm. or whether we should give the deal to someone else. Or, mm. But I remember at the time people would say, uh, don't worry about the money. Like the money will come. Just make sure the <laughs> you deal is that good. A lot of property, yeah. You think to yourself, how? Like, yeah. What does that mean? Yeah, like, they do that a lot of property. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Just bring and the deal. The money will somehow, come. Yeah, it it always how. works because, I don't know how. and that's when you realize that like, money actually isn't the problem. Yeah, it's yeah, the quality yeah, of the yeah, deal. Yeah, if you've got a good quality yeah, deal and you've got a good network, or you've got access, then you'll be able. The deal's not good enough. Yeah, yeah. The deal's not good enough. The deal's not good enough. Numbers aren't good enough. Yeah, and I think another great point actually is um, there's something I noticed is that the older community really do want to work with us. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, for example, you have a lot of people that are in their 40s, 50s, work really good jobs or they're retired or etc. 
They don't want to run around. Yeah. They don't want to do nope. the work. They, they're tired. They've, they've done all the work for the last 25, 100%. 30 years. Mm-hmm. They want you as their younger cousin, nephew, yeah. cousin, whatever it is, fa- community, to go and do the work, to go and find that deal, to source it, to manage it, mm. etc., and handle that process. So w- everyone has the opportunity. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. The fact you live in London, you know what I mean? Your boss's yeah. uncle, yeah. sister's mum has money. Do you yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. I think it's just about putting yourself out putting there. yourself out yeah. There. so yeah. yeah so that's a good point so you yeah. know what is yeah I'm, I'm actually loving the fact that because we're getting into million pound homes now mm. but I love the fact that you come from a property background do you mm. know what I say mm. your foundations are yeah. in seeing your parents do it yeah, yeah building yourself up in terms of working having your own credibility understanding reading the books doing the education mm-hmm. doing your own deals mm-hmm. so how does million pound homes come about like where does that come into the story so when randomly on it was like a Sunday, 5 a.m. Like I was just thinking, I need to find new deals, find mm. a way to find new deals. So I was looking at, obviously, right moving zip players is there, but yeah. I was looking at social media to think, is somebody going to post something? Or I was just mm. looking anywhere, whether it's mm. Facebook mm. or Instagram. So then I set up, um, so I went on Instagram, but you know when you go on Instagram, if you look at property and you like property, then you start seeing all these American homes, all yeah, these Australian yeah, yeah, homes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Obviously, it's the algorithm pushing property your way. Mm-hmm. So in the UK, there wasn't anything like that. So you might see Knight Frank or you might see Savills. Yeah. They might post some properties, but it was very early days for them. Mm. But in terms of other platforms, there wasn't many mm. or any really. Yeah. So I said, okay, fine million dollar homes in America or whatever it is, million dollar listings, million pound homes, let's do the UK mm. version. So I set up that Instagram, that was May 2018. Um, and I'll go on Rightmove and I'll take some homes, I'll type in 50 million pounds homes in Surrey and then I'll just take the pictures, I'll post it on Instagram. Yeah. Mm. At the beginning, the page was terrible. The pictures, <laughs> the quality of the images were terrible. Um, there was black spaces around everything. Mm. And I was just posting like three yeah, times a day, just yeah. mm-hmm. blurry pictures. Yeah. But I didn't know these areas existed. So uh, it was like almost like research for me at the me same time. At the same time. Yeah, yeah. So then, I, to be fair, I even stopped looking for the property deals as much and just started looking at these areas. And yeah. obviously it's aspirational, but it's interesting as well mm. to, to look yeah. at it. But then interesting, like, so what I noticed is that you went high-end straight mm-hmm. away. Like yeah. these are high-end homes, mm-hmm. that, you know, I've said million pound homes. So my thing is like, did you always have that intention or was the intention to... Yeah, like what was the intention? There was no it? plan, no intention, no nothing. Just wanted to put it something looked, out. It looked nice. Mm. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I said the areas look nice, so and I said genuine interest peop- of yours. It was just interest. Was it for you? Like, is it for maybe one? Like, not maybe one day I'm gonna live in one of these areas, and I want to identify what area I want to live in. I guess essentially, or was it that? It wasn't even really that. It oh, was okay. people need to see this. Okay. Like, mm. it was more like how I don't know these areas. Uh, do exactly. people really? Do people know this exists? So this even relates back to a lot of my um, earlier experiences where. As I said, because I I felt like I wasn't as smart as other people, yeah. I'd be like, okay, once I learned this, I'm like, did everyone know? Everyone else knew this, and I didn't know this. How did mm. like how did I not mm. know this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, when I give information, if I learned something with my friends, I'm like, no, everyone has to know this. Mm. When I got a job at Barclays, I referred 13 people. Mm. When I got a job wow. at Waitrose, I referred like all my friends. Mm. I'm wow. like, everybody got has to know man. this. So I had the same concept with Million Pound Homes. Got you. Like everybody had everybody has to know these areas exist. Mm. Yeah, no, so then amazing. I just put it out there, and I was posting and as i said it was it was growing growing naturally but to be fair i didn't really care about it that much i was working in barclays i was a corporate relationship mm. manager i was bored out of my mind so i was just posting on right mm. taking pictures and posting every day yeah. it, it, it was yeah. when it got to a lockdown that mm, okay. that's when um i was like you know what i need to i need to do something different because yeah. you're at home it's doom and gloom <laughs> But at the same time, people are being more entrepreneurial. You're hearing people mm-hmm. buying this and selling for this mm-hmm. and people are making a lot of money. And when I so I spoke to one of my friends and he saw the name Million Pound Homes with a crap logo and the page was just not the best. Mm-hmm. He was like, look, if you fix this up, it could be something like mm-hmm. proper. And then I thought about it and I was looking at even like my property experience, whether it was from the transactional, the transactional element. And I was thinking, you know what, actually it could be. So I cleaned it up, changed the logo. Um, and then I just started posting every single day, like mm. three times a day. Mm. And I would get pictures from Zipla sold archives okay. where it would be before images and it would say the, the house oh, was yeah, a million yeah, pounds. Yeah. Then I'll go on house mm. and it will say, it will have this, uh, the newer pictures, but then you can see that actually the house was sold for three million pounds. Wow. So I'll put the before and after pictures, then I'll put it in the description yeah. and then I'll take the copy and then I'll ah, post it. Sick. So I'm basically doing that three times a day. And it's almost like blogging and documenting yeah, what, yeah, what, yeah. whatever it is. But um, at that time, mm. 
obviously people were interested in it, but what I found was that a lot of people were looking for these kind of homes and they couldn't find it on um, right move and Zipla. Mm. The homes were going too quickly because people wanted more space. They wanted more garden space. People were living in flats. Interesting, eh? They wanted to move outside of London to mm. bigger homes. Mm. People wanted to renovate their homes. So they were following the page for aspirational yeah. or inspiration or mm. um, home renovation ideas. Yeah. So I'm looking to renovate my home right now. Mm. I use million pound homes as like mm. my, yeah. my source of I was going to say, I've got a question there. Like, have you noticed a trend in regards to areas and price points that sell you know, in that luxury, you know, high yeah. end market, is there like certain areas you go, okay, yeah, that, you know, if you see a, a million pound house in that area, it's it's going, like it's going in a week or so. Yeah, 100%. So most of the homes that we sold was in home counties. Okay. We didn't even really do that much in London, I think. Wow. Off the, off the top of my head. It was more like Hertfordshire, Buckinghamshire, yeah. Surrey. And they saw the biggest change in, in the million pound, million pound plus bracket, they saw the biggest change. So it was wow. like, um, home counties or East England, East Midlands, mm. Wales had a massive change, mm. for example. So um, London, obviously, it's, London's been expensive, yeah. but a lot of these people realise that there's there's more outside of London. Definitely. They don't need to be in London because they're not travelling to the office yeah. five days a week now. They might have to come in once a week or That's remote right. working just helped. So people are moving out and yeah. they got more space and they got more value for money. Yeah. But the funny thing is as well, it kind of went against people as well because now everyone's everybody's moving the prices are just going crazy mm. so it's just more about comfort and three million pound homes we had a lot of people coming to us saying i'm a cash buyer i've got five million pounds yeah, yeah, yeah. um yeah, yeah, yeah. help me find a home <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah now at first no wait before you even get there <laughs> yeah 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 that's a bit mad like, you can't be dropping that one because you can't okay. just drop that one anyhow like that <laughs> like, before you get there let's yeah. read it okay so yeah, right bring it now back. bring it back you've gone <laughs> from a page that you've just started. Yeah. I've seen it today. It's at 183 yeah, 183k followers, yeah, yeah, yeah. thousand. That's 180. K. So yeah, cool. How did you go? Like where? Like what would this? Where was the turning point? So where you realized, hey, I can really do something with this. Make money from this. May May 2020. That was I was on 3,000 followers. Okay. Mm -hmm. And from when I started posting the more I would say blog type posts before and after, etc. Um, we were growing about three, four thousand followers a week. Wow! So at that point, obviously you're getting a lot of people reposting and likes and comments and DMs and and things like that. And you don't really take it too serious because the idea is that it's, it's social media. So mm. people are not going to come through social media to buy a, a million pound home. Yeah, so it's just you. documenting the process. Mm -hmm. And it was one guy that was like, "I'm looking. My budget's one point two million. Um, can you help me find a home?" I was like, "Bro, is this?" I always carry on, but it's carry on. Carry on. And it's so good because you open up a circle for other people's, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean, yeah, to yeah. come to you. But yeah, go on. One point. So it was like I got one point two million. This is, this is my cash. budget. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so it was it was cash, but it was like, but obviously at that at that time I was thinking that's it's a lot because mm. it is a lot. Yes, hundred percent. Obviously, it's a lot. Obviously, when you look in the market and you look at homes at 1.2 million, especially mm. in London, you're like, okay, it's not, it doesn't get you much. Of course. So I, when he said it, I was like, okay, is this real? I remember telling my missus, like, somebody actually DM'd asking for a home. Mm. So I went to look for all these deals. I went, contacted all these agents yep. and said, all right, cool, what properties? And, and then I was speaking to agents and they were like, but where's the lead from? I was like, oh, it's from Instagram. Mm. I'm like, okay, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll send you some deals. Mm. They didn't send you, they didn't wow. send me anything. Mm. So I found some on-market stuff, sent it to him, but obviously he'd seen all the on-market stuff. Mm -hmm. So it was a bit of a waste of time for myself and for him. Mm -hmm. But then I realised that, you know what, that is, there's clearly some transactional value here if people are saying, there's people are seeing that they can come to me and ask if I can help them find a home. Mm -hmm. 100%. Which is basically property sourcing. Yes, yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. when I started posting more homes that were on the market saying, oh, this home is for sale mm -hmm. or a home that was sold, then people would ask mm. me, ah, oh, so is this home for sale? Or um, an agent will come to me and say, can I advertise my new listing? Wow. Um, a developer will say, oh, um, can you help me find um, clients that are looking to do private, private client builds, yep. build their home? So it became, basically became a lead generation platform wow. for people go. in the property business. Um, so we were making money through ads, through um, referrals, and that was from July, 2020. Yep. Um, and then the first, um, buyer that kind of like confused me a little bit was mm -hmm. um, was it August, September 
somebody came came and said, look, I've um, made a lot of money through PPE and okay. um, it, it was a it was a good amount of money, but I've got five million pounds cash, I wanna buy a home. Mm. Then I wanna spend eight million pounds on a home for my brother. And then I've got a million pound budget for um, another family member. Wow. I've so <laughs> obviously at that point, that's, that's what I was saying, it was a bit like, wow, Whoa. this is a bit, this is a bit much. So yeah. that's when I made sure that, okay, fine. Essentially I'm property sourcing. Yeah. So we need to make sure we've got all the right things in of place. Course, of course. So um, insurances, yeah. you got AML, all of that. All of that yeah, thing. All I got of that, everything. Yeah. So I made them send me proof of funds, sent me a bank statement, um, showing all the funds, et cetera, where the funds came from. Yeah. And um, then I could go to developers and say, look, I've got this person. Yeah. And then one developer I went to, he was like, look, tell me, like, what, what's going on? Mm. You got this through Instagram, are you sure? Like, yeah. d d tell me yeah. the truth. Yeah. Like, you were the first doing this, like, in that space, It's crazy how you've created your own angle to that. I mean, you, like, I, I love your honesty in the sense where you didn't plan to do this. That's all. You know, for you to be able to connect with people on that kind of, you know, with that kind of money through yeah. an Instagram, that's kind of crazy. I mean, were they shocked to see your face as well? Like, hmm? You know, so this, this so that's guy so that's why I didn't put my face out at the beginning. Uh, of course, yeah. Now, obviously, there's there's obvious things, but mm. then there's other factors you take into consideration, like age. Mm. So I'm young, mm. really and truly. This young, young black boy mm. is he really gonna know where the million pound homes are mm. or the right million pound homes, or has mm. he got the right connections? Like, yeah, is he? Yeah, yeah. So was that ever a conversation with any of the clients? Or no, no, okay. no because not. at the yeah. point that they've met me, it's like they might go, ah. Oh. Yeah. But they've already spoken to me long yeah, enough to yeah. know I know what I'm talking and about. And then they go with to. property. If you're giving value. They're, you give you, value. You're giving the that service that they need. They don't care. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. So that's why I provided the value first before yeah. they saw me. That's so it. then at that point, it's like there's. If you then turn around and say you don't want to deal with me, then you're an idiot. Yeah. 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 In my <laughs> head, they don't make no sense. Simple facts. So, um, but that ties into my um experience with financial services okay. and property before and mm. property sources exactly. and being in property exactly. and knowing where the deals mm. are exactly. etc exactly. so so so, so with them did you end up finding them a deal or what was it? so we oh, found yeah yeah so we found it we found a five million pound it was a five and a half million pound home that one fell through on the day of exchange Damn, through, crazy through um there, there was multiple things that went wrong mm -hmm. in in that deal um but how long do these processes last as well because they're cash buyers does it still yeah. last a long time it still takes time his one was a bit different because um, there was an issue around source of wealth. Okay. okay. So that 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 was a thing that delayed it. But mm. really and truly, the same thing in a million pound plus transaction was a, okay. uh, or, or in a fifty k. It's, it's similar process. Okay. 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 Got you. Um, got you. Similar process. Okay. Cool. So cool, 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 there's cool. there's not there's and not that much difference. commission. I mean, after I mean, but commission yeah. on that. I mean, those the kind of did so it end up selling by the way? Did it end up no, that something? that one didn't end up okay. going through. Okay. Obviously, that one was painful because it was a oh. five and a half million pound <laughs> deal. But okay. the agents are getting like one percent, one and a half percent. Okay, cool. On those kind of deals okay so obviously that would have been a nice and that would have been my first deal yeah, yeah, yeah. but then that just made me why i was silly on that deal yeah. is because i was really excited about making sure that goes through so i i was like look make we'll, we'll make sure it goes through yeah. what i should have done is remarket the property and just go and find somebody oh, else mm. but i was yeah. too ego like yeah too eager like i was saying to him yeah, yeah we're gonna make it happen yeah. and he's yeah we're gonna buy other properties but to be fair he, he just wasted my time mm. if i'm being honest but then i learned from yeah, from yeah, that yeah, yeah. and um we we just kept it kept it going like that. So we were partnering up with estate agents. They had a listing. We'll do an exclusive ah. uh, market, and then we will sell the home through social media, and then yeah. we'll take a commission split. Wow. Or somebody we want to do an advert, then we'll do adverts. Or short stays. We did uh, made a good amount of money through short stays. So if somebody wants to rent one of these homes for a week, then you have a relationship with either an owner or management company, yeah. and then we would do a lead through that. Wow. Um, so really, it was just lead generation through mm. and for property. What businesses. was the most lucrative, I guess, angle stream? So uh, the the biggest home we sold was a five million pound home okay. in West Midlands. Um, Where about in Sutton Coalfield? Sutton oh Coalfield. yeah, there's a, yeah, there's a lot of money. Yeah, there's a lot of big houses. Yeah, 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 Coalfield yeah, yeah. is so, like a booming area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So like Sutton Coalfield, Solihull, those are like mm, yeah, yeah. obviously, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so we sold a home um, via Instagram, same concept. So we went up, we shot a uh, video, mm. um, the agent thing. So the agent, a lot of those agents in home counties or like in the regions. So mm. the way that they operate is. They know all the local people, all the local families, mm. the people with money. Mm. So they would go out to them if a home's going, like it's about to go on the market, they'll go out to them first. Mm. But in areas like Sutton Coalfield, um, there's not that many families that have money. Mm. So the agent, 
unless they put it on right move, the agent's not Makes necessarily going to have that reach. Ah, okay. So That's she what their value is added in, yeah. exactly. So she came to me and said, "Look, we want to do an exclusive thing with you. Um, you put it on your socials if you sell, then we'll do a commission split." Yeah. So we did a fee split on 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 that deal, but we put it on Instagram. It went first day we put it out. We had seven viewings booked. Yeah. The first person that contacted me went and saw it, I think in two days. Mm. He agreed to sell that day. He wow. bought it cash. Wow. Um, Just like that. I think he guys, sold- there's money out there. You yeah, know, yeah there's money out there. There's money out there. He bought it cash. He was a, he was a young guy as well. I think he might have been that- in the 30s or 40s, early 40s. Yeah, yeah. But he sold his company, uh, made a good amount of money. Yeah. He was looking for his dream home. So he went in, he saw that home, he bought everything, took the furniture. Literally. <laughs> wow. Yeah, wow, he, wow. He took, he took yeah. everything as that, so that was the most, I'll say lucrative. Yeah, that's, that was a question I was gonna ask. Like, um, cause it's Instagram, do you tend to see that a lot of your clients that come to buy properties are more from a younger, like, younger, younger background or is it, do you yeah. attract all ages or what so do you tend to see? 40s, 50s yeah. is like late late 30s to, mm. to, to, to early 50s, mm. um, but, it's um a lot of the times it was kids as well. So mm. the kids will they would know that their parents are looking for a home. So they'll yeah. say, Oh, that like, mum, dad, have you seen this property? And then they'll show them show them mm. my Instagram. Yeah. So we had a few viewings like that. Wow. Mm. Um so Amazing. yeah, but I, I would say it's more the it's not necessarily the age, it's the style of the home. So okay. with um like I like modern homes. Yeah, yeah. So really and truly it was a page full of homes that I liked. Ah. That that's basically what it was. And they were more modern homes. Yeah. So if you like modern homes, similar to how, how the homes are in like Dubai or whatever yeah. it is, mm. then you would like my page. Yeah. And that, that was the main thing. And have you leveraged um, the following you have on Instagram to go to other platforms? Or what's your strategy with that? Is it sort of like just kill yeah. it on Instagram? Or are you thinking you know, so based with, on my clientele, I can go to another platform? So we, we can do like, we can do TikTok, we yeah. can do YouTube, yeah. but it was more like the, the f- it, so I have a problem of focusing on way too many things, yeah? <laughs> like, I think we all do, bro. And I know yeah, yeah, if yeah. I like focus too much on the TikTok, focus too much on the YouTube, yeah, yeah. then and I just know that it's it's not gonna be done properly yeah, or yeah. Instagram is gonna get left. Yeah. So Instagram worked for us and there was a transactional value to it. Yep. So yeah, that yeah. was the main thing, the, the money, yeah, it, yeah, it, comes, yeah, it yeah, was yeah. coming through Instagram. Yeah. So now it's more about like, now I've got a team in place. So now we're actually building out the YouTube and building out the TikTok. Okay. Yeah. So all the other channels to make sure that we're doing it properly. Because that was our next question, like, because we haven't got a lot of time, but I just yeah. wanted to know, like, obviously Instagram now for you is like a cash cow in the sense mm. that you can get money from actually selling mm. and get money from advertising and mm. all sorts. So it's like, what's the vision for that going forward now? Yeah, yeah. And then afterwards, we just want to go on like some practical steps that, mm. you know, you can tell your younger self, okay, you're starting from fresh, mm. practical steps on how to maybe build this following or how to just get started, maybe doing the same thing. And yeah. then we'll go from there, so yeah. So in terms of the vision, mm. with Million Pound Homes, I look, because it's a lead generation platform, I realized that um, we don't control the customer journey. We just basically, somebody contacts us and then we pass on the lead. Mm. But in terms of that process of even like them, the person that comes through knowing what service they need mm. or even upselling other services. So somebody might come through and like I said, say their budget's three million pounds. Yeah. Um, I want to buy a home, but you is your budget really three million pounds? Mm. Is it four million pounds? Mm. Or is it two million pounds? Mm. Is it, do you need a mortgage? Do you not need a mortgage? And mm. what type of mortgage are you gonna need? Or do you need to do work? Do you need to do renovations? Can you actually buy a plot of land, get land mm. with planning and then build your home? Mm. So what I realized is that if it, I can speak to everyone, but it, it doesn't make sense mm. at a certain point. Mm. So I wanted to build a platform that would personalize that journey so that at least they would be able to figure out, okay, what stays they're at and what they can do. And here's all the additional options. Mm, almost like a platform version of like a type form that qualifies you into certain different so, so I would say like a more personalized right move. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, okay, yeah. got so you. So if you, so that like was that. the, the tech element mm. that we were introducing to yeah. Million Pound Homes, yeah. that kind of thing. It's essentially a portal marketplace, yeah, however yeah, you want to position yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And that's where we raise investment in order to actually build that platform mm -hmm. and move to that next stage. Yeah. Yeah. So when we were doing that, we were going out to different agents, different developers, and they were like, look, we like your platform, but show us that social media stuff. So I'm like, mm. okay, cool. We can tie both of them into it. So now what we're doing, we've I split it slightly. So we've got Million Pound Homes, we've got MPH Social. Yep. And MBH Social is a social media marketing agency. Mm -hmm. So basically, 
we build up the channels for other agents, other developers, other people in property businesses. Yeah. And we've been doing that for the last three months. Okay. And that has been a great experience. Yeah. And now we can tie in the tech element to mm. that experience, to, to MBA Social. So we're growing both of them basically that's a, at this that's moment a, in the time. That's a fantastic. I mean, I want to get to that last question with, yeah. with the advice and stuff. But bro, mm. that is phenomenal to be fair. It's as crazy well, because what you've what you've done is because I've seen in the last ten years the amount of social media agencies that popped up and made loads of money. Yeah. yeah. But you've actually tailored it almost into like the property space and found ways to kind of fit in that pocket. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. People that are looking for those sort of homes can come to you and really get a clear picture of what they're after. Mm -hmm. and you can articulate, and because you had that, that experience from property, you can actually articulate it and explain yeah. And, yeah. and kind of help them along that journey to put. So it's like property sourcing, but like another level of yeah. yeah no, I just want to add as well that I just love the fact that you didn't let how you look or your age be a factor. Facts, like yeah. you literally just went for high end straight in. Like this is what I want. This yeah. is the, and it came so natural. You know what I mean? This yeah. came from a natural interest, and from that you've created like your own business from it. Yeah, your so own lane as well. There, there your is, own I, name, I, your I, own I, brand. Yeah, yeah. I know what I love about it, bro. Before this podcast, I'll be very real with you. Mm. People wouldn't know that. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? You're not going to know. I don't have a clue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it goes out to people that are listening. Sometimes, I've been following yeah, that page. Yeah, the, you know, <laughs> I didn't know. I was like, oh, it's, yeah, oh, yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. don't yeah. have to be the guy that's like, hi guys, I'm the guy that's, you know, selling homes. You're just seeing pictures, beautiful pictures. Obviously we spoke that networking event and I, I, was pick, I could hear him speaking. I was picking his brain. I said, "Nah, this, there's more to this. There's more, there's there. more to this that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. that meets the eye, basically." But I like um, that. the fact that um, you found that lane is, is fantastic, and I, I, just to get your thoughts on the property space as well, yeah. just where it's at, and you know, mm. yeah, why two people should be interested in that space as well. So, um, so tech in general, mm. whether it's prop tech, fintech, um, whatever tech. Mm should always be explored especially i would say f we're, we're younger but mm. it should be explored by everyone but we have an advantage mm. uh, yeah. i would say that so it has to be explored because yeah. it's going in that direction whether you like it or not that's it so um but from a business perspective it can just reduce your costs and make your business more efficient mm. so if you want to look at it from like if you run a, an estate agents mm. basically yeah. you need to do um anti-money laundering checks. Yeah. Mm. How are you going to do that check? You're going to use a tech platform in order to do that check, to do background checks mm. and do it within a certain amount of minutes and it's going to cost you pounds. So I don't know how they did it before, but I can imagine it was a lot longer and yeah, a lot yeah, more expensive. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's just, it's going, it's going to be saving businesses money. Yeah, yeah. Now, if you want to start your own tech business, there's obviously, um, I would say there's, multiple benefits of, of starting a, a, a tech business mm. but as i said of efficiency but even if you look at the the valuations um the ability to scale a tech business yeah, is yeah, much yeah. easier than yeah, a, yeah. a service-based business yeah, yeah. um the places that it can take you to is just much it's just different yeah. compared mm -hmm. to a, a service business yeah. there's a lot of limitations because you have to look at manpower yeah. and and things like that yeah. so you can scale without having to yeah. hire other people you you can yeah. scale you can scale much easier yeah. i would say with the prop tech industry in the uk now though mm. the problem is is that well it's still new so there's only been you know the big biggest exit is zupla yeah. um and home track which zupla bought yeah. but there hasn't been that many big exits in prop tech mm. so we don't really know what the cap is on the market yeah, 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 yeah. and there's a disconnect between property businesses and prop tech mm. businesses Explain. What, what so mean? if i'm an estate agent yep. and i've been doing it 20 years and this guy comes in and says i've got this amazing app mm. that can save your buyers 20 percent mm. um time or whatever it is yep. do i really care that much to implement your business yeah, into my yeah. business when it's already kind of working it already yeah. works mm. the so industry's quite kind of old school as well it is it's very old yeah. school mm. so there's a ma so even if you look at there's like prop tech association mm. they are trying to get you know property businesses yeah. into it a bit more but yeah. it's very difficult to because as i said the estate agents they're happy doing what they're doing yeah. or yeah. property business they're happy doing what they're doing it's very old school so yeah. if you look at the tech people they sometimes they don't come from property backgrounds so they think look this is i have tried to buy a home it was a terrible experience i'm yeah. going to start a business now to try and resolve it and then you start to realize that the reason why there was a disconnect is because it's you have to change the either the attitudes or the mindset 
of the people. So There's it's hard to sell. That you have to onboard people as well. Like people need to mm. actually understand this is something new that I need to learn. Yeah, yeah maybe yeah, yeah. like I have to start something new. So mm. there's that side of stuff as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. But yeah, if yeah. if they if people don't care to because their business works, then they're not going to. So it's just about finding that. Obviously, look, it's a main thing in business, finding the pain points yeah. and then making sure that you can resolve those things. Yeah, so yeah. one of the main things that somebody needs to come up with is sales progression. Yeah. If yeah. somebody starts and there's been many people that have tried to do tech businesses around sales progression, yeah. but it requires too many people to update. So the agent has to update, the mm. conveyance has to update, mm. the mortgage broker oh, has to man. update. So annoying. But are they all going to update to on the same platform? One, yeah. They need to consolidate into yeah, one thing. It. it has to be done. So, and but that is done, a massive problem. It? Yeah, it will mm. be done. So, if somebody actually solves that problem, then they're gonna win. They're, they're gonna time. win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how you have to see, especially with prop tech. That's how you have to look at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, not the obvious things like, oh, it's hard to find a home. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, it is hard to find yeah, a home. What but makes the process easier, exactly. faster, more streamlined? Exactly. 100%. So. Um, yeah. But yeah, no. That so prop tech is just it's it's a uh, it's still early mm. and there's still a lot of scope to grow within the next few years. Okay. So I would say you know just explore different ideas and, and test the market, it, build your so much, your yeah. MVP and and see see what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for the last part now. No, so one more okay, question cool. before that one. Yeah. How much have you have you raised any money for your prop tech business? Yeah, so I raised just under two hundred k. Okay. So amazing. one of the um so like the home, one of the homes that we sold yeah. the wow. the seller invested. Amazing. Um, it's crazy how you help someone and then they invest. It's happened yeah, yeah. so many times. I've seen it so many times as well. Yeah. So that's like what we were saying, add value. Yeah, and yeah. then it, it naturally the the, it, yeah, it yeah, will come. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then we had another investor reached out to you through LinkedIn. Mm. Um, so I was doing outreach via LinkedIn. Amazing. And then just sending them my concepts. Mm. And this guy, he just sold his business for a silly amount, um, I think to Microsoft. Mm. And um, reached out to him had a call for about 30 minutes mm. he's like yeah i'm in yeah. literally like that he's like, <laughs> that's yeah, it yeah i mean that's it and then um oh. i don't know if you like um but like S- i don't know if you know like seis eis all that kind of stuff yeah no no i'll, I'll go into it briefly but yeah. basically it's about raising money and b- people need to know this when yeah, yeah, yeah. when raising money no, so um seis is based if your business is under two years yeah. um i can't remember if the other um um, things that you need to, but it was under two years. That was one of the main things, mm. and I think it needs to be like a tech business. Yep. The government has an initiative where, if you are looking to raise, I think up to now it's up to two fifty. But if you're looking to raise up to two fifty, two hundred fifty k, then you can raise that under SCIS and EIS. Wow. And SCIS just basically means that any investor that gives you, let's say, ten k, the government will give them back fifty percent of that through tax. Wow. And if the business fails, they'll give, give them another 25%. Wow. So really and truly, the, the investor can look at it like this. If I've got 10K, I give it to you, I get about seven and a half. Yeah. Wow. I lose two and a half. Wow. So that's how most tech businesses mm. at the beginning are raising money. Mm. So the government's just giving them this tax rebates. insurance? Tax wow. rebates. Wow. wow. Tax that's rebates, nuts. yeah, yeah. So mm. one, of the investors that I, um, one of the investors that I got, I said to him, look, Give me double the amount that you're gonna give me, mm. and you'll get X amount free, back free tax. Mm. He's he's from the UK, but he's based in Canada at the moment. Yeah. But he's obviously got some income here. So yeah. At first, he was like, mm, not sure about it. But then, I think it was half a couple of hours before the end of the tax deadline. Mm. He was like, yeah, let's do it. So I take wow. all the paperwork in and and, wow. and make it happen. But you get fifty percent back through tax, and then EIS you get thirty percent. You get thirty back thirty percent back through tax. Mm. So if you're raising money for your business, it's almost like a no-brainer yeah, to yeah, yeah. tell people, look, SAS, EAS, mm. go and get registered. That's how a lot of businesses are raising money. And that's amazing. Okay. That is amazing. Yeah. I, want, I want to hear practical steps on that now, do you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean, need to explore that in another episode. Yeah, yeah, tech yeah, stuff, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think that's why, you know, we brought Kofi. I think, you know, the, the tech space, prop tech space is booming. Raising finance as well in that space is just different. Mm. I don't know, like, people have you know, raising a million pounds for a startup, for example, is sort of just normal. It's not It's not yeah. even a thing. Within property is a bit more, oh wow. It's just like a nuance yeah. for us that are coming from property background yeah. to hear that you're raising funds just like that, mm. yeah. through that way. It's like, but okay. remember, if you then think about it through the EIS, SCIS, then yeah. you start to realise why people exactly. are raising right, X amount. Like there's a lot more, obviously property is asset backed, mm. etc. But in the tech space because of EIS and SEIS it makes it a exactly. lot but well, people um, from the outside won't see that they won't know that so yeah. yeah quite common thing there. 
Um, but, um, actionable steps. 100%. Yeah, actionable steps. Give us some last two, two yeah, tips for, so, for, for, yeah. for your and younger self. And just before self. that, I want people listening, this is your opportunity to get pen and paper and write this part down because it's going to give you practical steps. So, yes, yeah. please. Yeah. Um, Talk to your younger self, yeah. I say actionable steps. Um, so, if I was like, I'd say going back to, there's different points, obviously, but if I was like 14, for example, mm. as I said, I didn't think I was that smart. Um, I wasn't really sure what I was going to do. Um, I left school uh, forcibly, kicked out of school before I got sent to Ghana. Mm. So I just wasn't really sure what, what I could do, but um, I would have just said t- to myself that just figure out what I enjoy and then sort of double down on it cool. because then I will be willing to learn more about it. And then at later stage, I would have been able to figure out whether it's a career or passion or whatever it is. Um, so I would have done that when I was younger, that when I was like 14. Mm-hmm. Um, but definitely at like 21, I would have said, for example, I didn't believe I was that entrepreneurial I like, I can solve problems. Mm. So at work, I would always be the person that would be like, this don't make sense. Like, mm. what, what what are we doing here? Like, can we can we do something else? And that doesn't get rewarded at work if there's a strict sort of guideline yeah. on, on what you need to do. So if you, if you enjoy what you do or you're at work or whatever it is and you see problems, you like to solve it. Um, obviously you have to look at the environment that you're in, if it rewards it, yeah. then great. If it doesn't reward it, go and find another environment, whether it's your own business or another company that rewards you being a problem solver mm. um, and fixing things in creative ways. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, and also actually, um, in terms of growing your Instagram page mm. as well, what practical steps would you give someone like that? Because yeah. we can all benefit Finish from Finish with that. the last practical step and then yeah. give yeah. that one as well, yeah. I would say, um, last thing, um, just just do it. Like I know you're thinking you might be thinking about something. Thanks. Just mm. there's no point. Just yeah, do it. Yeah, 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 so yeah, even yeah. like when we're talking about million pound homes, it was a long term plan strategy. This everyone t- there was no plan. Tell them, I, just like that. I just did it. I just did it and I was like, look, if it if it grows, I'll figure it out yeah. then. Do you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, now obviously you can't live your life like that. Yeah. But if you have an idea, especially when you're younger, if you ain't like, I'm I'm getting married soon and mm. I'm renovating my home yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So I can't be just be doing yeah. without mm. but especially when I was like younger, like early twenties, just do it. It doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, there's yeah. no like the, it's not there's not much implications if you have for example obviously you have to maybe look after your family or do certain things and yes you have to have a bit certain financial yeah. basis mm. Got you. but to some extent you can still take certain risks outside mm-hmm. but you just need to do just try yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you will learn as you go along Facts. if you do for long enough you will learn Facts. um Facts. so yeah i'd i'd say that that was the last thing and oh, what, what was the I think he said he was um, growing, so growing yeah, social growing. media. So now, um, obviously there was cheat codes with certain things you could do on TikTok, certain things you can do on Instagram. It's mm. completely changed. Mm. Um, but it's just the quality of the content yeah. is 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 important. But one of the things that we look at a lot of the times is, so on TikTok, if you look at like like count and um, over videos over the last six months in a particular field, you're going to see certain videos that got 500,000 views, a million views or whatever mm. it is, you can just replicate that content in that your own format. Mm. So if it's top 10 tips to find a home in London, mm. you can replicate those videos. You can, um, and put it in your own spin, spin on it, but make sure you're consistent with it. Mm. So it's, the landscape's changed, it's all content, but there's, it's almost like easier now because you can see what works on other platforms. Mm. You just have to be consistent. Right. Build up your own audience and then yes. make sure that you can provide some value, transactional value. Oh, thank you, man. Thank you for, <laughs> yeah, this was a great interview. Yeah, man. Great, great yeah, interview. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, we're yeah. definitely going to have to do a part two because. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we spoke uh, off open air. doors with that text. Yeah, we spoke, yeah. Yeah, spoke off air about just making sure that we don't end it here and just, you know, just, just leave off here. So we'll talk and, uh, mm-hmm. you know, figure out what's the next part. Honestly, your story yeah. is quite unique and mm-hmm. uh, it's different. And, you know, you're such a humble guy, even from when I met you in that network environment, just chilled, calm, but it just shows you, you know, people are doing some fantastic things out there. So don't, don't think, you know what I'm yeah. saying? It doesn't seem nothing. And don't limit yourself as well. Exactly. Think, think big, you know yeah. And there's money out there, guys. You know, that's what yeah, there's money out there. So, you know, don't be afraid to ask for it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, guys, hope you enjoyed the episode. Where We're can they find you? By oh, the yeah. Way. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, Million Pound Homes, yeah. Instagram. Mm-hmm. 
So come on, come on, come on. Branding, branding, branding. <laughs> branding right there. Million Pounds, so that's the company name. Mm-hmm. And then um, personal, Kofs BK, K-O-F-S-B-K. That's my future name. billionaire, I'm just saying it now. Future, future billionaire. Future billionaire. I'm just Please. saying it. I'm just saying it, guys. <laughs> I, I can say it first. <laughs> I'm saying it. But yeah, right, guys, then, make sure cool. you follow the page and uh, follow us as well. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> and we'll, we'll speak to you guys soon, man. Stay blessed, stay invested. Peace. 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 Peace.